Welcome to this Tuesday edition of Asia Business Report. I'm Sharon Jit Lail in Singapore. We start with markets and Wall Street shares tumbled Monday. Fears about the U.S. economy are intensifying after data showing falling prices and record housing inventories in new home sales, despite a modest rise in them. This is how markets uh, ended the day. The troubles in the housing sector pressuring banks and mortgage finance giants as well, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, though unusually both actually rose on Monday. Now, Asian markets all taking their cues from the U.S., the Nikkei and other major markets all down over 1% or more, as you can see there on your screen. Green. Now, earlier I spoke to Aaron Smith of Superfund Financial and asked him if America's credit woes would persist and continue to influence Asia's markets. We're seeing just the tip of the iceberg. Um, inflation is uh, here to stay, I would say, uh, if not increase. And this will have a dramatic effect on uh, global equity markets, not just the U.S. Uh, so we think that the, the stock market in the U.S. is probably not the best way to preserve your capital. Uh, going forward. And we also saw troubled mortgage lenders, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they continue to dominate the news. And actually, we saw their shares rising overnight, but there's still a lot of concerns. Do you think they will be nationalized? And what will that do, uh, you know, with the impending U.S. elections? Uh, could it be a very politicized issue? Well, the, the uh, precedent set is quite troubling because now that the Fed has stepped in and, and basically bailed those institutions out as well as Bear Stearns, uh, they set the precedent that they have to continue to do that in the future. It's also a very gray area as to which institutions they'll back up and which ones they won't. Uh, so it seems like they're going away from the, the free market economics of the past where uh, you know com companies just competed on their own merit. And as we can see, I mean, the credit jitters from the U.S. continuing to influence Asian markets. They're all lower today despite their huge gains on Monday. Yet prospects here seem a lot better. You've still got powerhouses like China and India, you know, seeing big growth. Do you think at some point Asia can decouple from what's happening in the U.S.? The stock markets will not decouple. Uh, they're very highly correlated to the U.S. and no independent Asian uh, um, economy is going to withstand a withdrawal or a, a decline in the U.S. economy. Um, however, uh, there will still continue to be a demand for commodities and real assets. So we think this is probably the safest place uh, for investors who are looking for growth on their capital. All right. And what about oil? Because you talk a lot about commodities. They're obviously creating a lot of the inflation that we're seeing. What are the prospects for oil prices? Uh, well, with oil pulling back from 147 down to its present level, we look at that as just a normal correction and actually a good opportunity for investors who thought they missed the boat. Um, but even more attractive is, is our, our metal, uh, like uh, gold, uh, specifically because of the weakness in the U.S. dollar and the inflation worries that we have. We think that gold can actually go to $1,500 per ounce in the next two to three years. Aaron Smith there from Superfund. In other news, a price hike in Japan for the first time in three decades for Toyota. The car maker will raise the price of some of its passenger cars to cope with skyrocketing steel costs. But there are concerns that the increase will depress already weak domestic demand even further. And analysts are forecasting strong figures when mining giant Rio Tinto releases its half-year results later today. But the company is also fighting off a hostile takeover bid from its bigger rival, BHP Billiton. Over the weekend, the government approved Chanelco's stake in Rio. A higher stake purchase from the Chinese company could potentially block BHP's bid. And Singapore's Tomasic Holdings will unveil its results today as well. The state-owned investment firm has already said that its assets rose over 10% in the year ending in March, despite the global credit crunch. Now, do catch our exclusive interview as well with Michael D, who's in charge of Tomasic's overseas investments on Asia Business Report tomorrow. Now, India's uh, manufacturing sector has been hit badly by the economic slowdown. Not only credit problems, but it's also grappling with power shortages and lousy roads. Supriya Menon reports from Mumbai. Deep drilling machines getting ready at the Prissyhole Machine Tools factory. 